So in the last video, we also lightly talked about the importance of the neutral wave position. This is where the minion waves clash on their initial spawn. But why is this so important? Forcing the wave to deviate from its neutral position opens up a myriad of benefits and consequences for you. For reference, let's take a look at bot lane, which is almost identical to top lane in terms of wave manipulation. Here are the different wave positions. The first is the neutral wave position, which can be considered anything within this boundary. The next is the danger zone, which is closer to the enemy tower, and the last is the safe zone, which is much closer to your tower. You can see that each zone is similar in the mid lane, just a bit smaller because the distance between the two towers is also smaller. Each zone benefits you in different ways, so let's go back to the bot lane and go into some scenarios. Okay, let's talk about deviating from the neutral wave position into their tower. The benefits here are pretty decent. One, your opponent has to last hit under tower. One thing we can all agree on is that it's substantially harder to last hit tower than it is to just last hit in the middle of the lane. Two, while your opponent is occupied with last hitting, you can easily get in some harass here to add on to the things that they need to be worried about. This pressure over time can drive you up to significant CS advantage. Now the obvious downside is that you're extremely pushed up. The enemy jungler is going to have a field day with you since you're so far from your tower. This also almost eliminates any threat from your jungler besides a tower dive. Now, let's talk about the other end of the spectrum, when the wave is here. This forces your opponent to move up here if they want to continue CSing. Ultimately, your jungler is going to have a field day if they stay up here any longer because of how far they are from their tower. The further they are, the more time you and your team have to deal damage to them. Inversely, this means that their jungler is going to have an extremely hard time ganking you. The distance from your tower is extremely short, giving them almost no time to deal damage unless they want to tower dive. You can see why this is better than the previous example. If the enemy decides to stay back because of multiple threats, you're essentially completely denying them CS and experience. Unfortunately, this doesn't come with some drawbacks. The most notable is arriving late. Now, let's say you're up here and the enemy jungler and your jungler meet up in the river for a good old fight. Since you're here, the enemy team has easy access to the river. Just from a pure distance standpoint, you're already at a disadvantage. You'll arrive late. Or the enemy laner pushes the wave faster than you can and it hits your tower, making it much harder to last hit. And then we have the neutral wave position. Well, it isn't great to have the wave here, and it's pretty much neutral. The only time you'd actually want your wave here is if you just reset the wave. But don't worry about resetting for now, we'll cover that later on in the series. So that was extremely long-winded, but it was worth it. Why? Because now you know how each of them benefits and harms you to an extent, so you can choose accordingly based on the situation. For example, their jungler is on the bottom side of the map and the enemy Twisted Fate has gone missing. What would you do? You would most definitely want the wave position to be in the safe zone since there are multiple enemy threats. You'd want to be closer to your tower for maximum safety, right? And as you'll learn later on in the course, your default action will almost always be keeping the wave in the safe zone. You have both the ability to completely deny CS and experience from the enemy, and you can easily keep yourself safe. But before we delve too deep into the when, let's first learn about the how. How do we deviate from the neutral wave position? Well, the first step is pushing. You'll want to push your waves in specific ways to get them in a favorable position. You'll do this by constantly killing their minion waves faster than they can kill yours. But the speed at which you kill their minions actually dictates how fast a wave position moves, which is an important concept we'll talk about later. The next, but not always necessary step, is keeping the wave in a static position, which is called freezing. Freezing is a little bit more complex than pushing, and it's pretty much an art. It definitely requires some extreme finesse. Essentially, you're keeping the minion wave health numbers at a sweet spot so that the wave position won't move in either direction. Either way, learning how to execute these strategies is a beast of its own. The one who outsmarts the other with these concepts is undoubtedly going to win the lane. So we'll cover each of these game winning concepts in the next two guides and we'll see you there.